Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Nurul Shafiqah bin Tirasi with student ID 2018-410292 and my supervisor is Ms. Wanur Aina binti Baharudin. Welcome to my presentation to my panel and all the viewers. So today, I'm going to present about my Viva that is online and distance learning, health seeking behaviors and mental well-being of first year undergraduate students. And this is the outline that I will present after this. So we'll start with the first part which is introduction, okay? So our work nowadays are undergoing COVID-19 pandemic which resulting in significantly increase in especially among university students and it being supported by most of the study. Okay, the problem statement. So there are two problems that inspires me to do this project. First one is the perception of students on health seeking behaviors which resulting in increasing students' mental health problems due to the unresolved matters because of the negative view to the health sources. Second one is the effect of online and distance learning on students' mental well-being. It can be resulting in academic performance and the completion of the study among university students. And then the significance of the study which is to help the students, also the organizations, to reveal the possible challenges to the existence of professionals. And next is the objectives of study. So the first one is I wanted to investigate the health seeking behavior of first year undergraduate students in UITM Jenker campus by using the general health seeking behavior questionnaire or GHSQ. Second one is I wanted to examine the level of mental well-being of first year undergraduate students by using the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale or WMWBS. And the last one is I wanted to correlate co between the health seeking behavior and the level of mental well-being of first year undergraduate students during online and distance learning. And then we go to the second part that is to to review. So the first one is COVID-19. It was identified as the seventh human coronavirus that caused by SARS-CoV-2 in Wuhan, Hubei province, China in December 2019 that have been effect of many factors, especially on mental health and mental well-being. Next is e-learning, which has been implemented in education during the COVID-19 pandemic by using the educational portals, YouTube, and teleconferencing platform. However, there is new challenges for students like different study methods and syllabus, which resulting in decline in performance into the workforce. And next is health seeking behaviors among university students. It can be described as how people handle their psychological condition by seeking help from formal, informal, or self-reliant sources. However, according to the previous study, most of the undergraduate students use informal sources for them to seek help due to their privacy, accessibility, confidentiality, and cost effectiveness. Surprisingly, there is some of the Previous research found that there is also students prefer not to tell anyone about their problems, but rather to handle them on their own. Lacuness is mental well-being. It is a state of optimal functioning that reflects a single dimension of two continuous models of mental health that can be described as a sense of internal life, self-acceptance, emotional mastery, and fulfillment of ability life problem solving. Moreover, in terms of higher education, mental well-being also can be related to the main indicators such as educational goals, student participation, and academic success. And then the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale or WMWBS. It is a 14 item questionnaire that has been developed to standardize the population well being assessment and it functions to capture a broad understanding of well being, including emotional response, cognitive evaluative dimension, and psychological functioning. These 14 items are rated on 5 point like a type scale as mentioned on the slide, with each item from 1 to 5 represents a score. The highest the score, the highest the mental well being. And last I'll talk before the literature review is General Health Seeking Behavior or GHSQ. It is a 20 item questionnaire that capable of measuring preference for mental health services that divided into two sections of the question with 10 questions for personal or emotional problem and another 10 questions for societal education problems. It also comprises three types of support which are formal, informal, and self-help sources. It is rated on a seven like a type scale ranging from extremely unlikely to extremely likely which will represent a score. The higher the score, the higher the probability for them to seek help. Let's move to the third part which is methodology. This research was using correlations research design and the material used was questionnaire to collect the data. It is conducted by using Google Form for data collections and was distributed to the participants via social media platforms. There is a 1,491 of target students in this research. I'm using simple random sampling method for sampling size and got expectations of 73 students. 
At the end, there is 86 students have been participated in this study, and a few statistical analyses were used to analyze the data, such as a simple descriptive statistic, categorical variables, and person correlation coefficient by using statistical package for the social science or SPSS. This research work began after the ethical approval was granted by Research Ethics Committee UITM and next to the recruitment was performed through the targeted students and then a link to the Google form that containing the questionnaire was distributed randomly to the first semester undergraduate students in UITM Junker through the social media platforms. And after that, the data were collected and analyzed for further findings. Now moving on to the first part which is the result and discussion. The majority of the participants were aged 21 years old, female and from Faculty of Business Management. All of them they were single, Malays, and only 84.9% of the participants were living with parents. This result will be excluded some of the participants that having an exclusion for this study. After screening the data, the WMWS were conducted and got average mental well-being for most of the students. Now for the HSQ. SQ. After totaling the score of the Likert type scale, the informal sources of help shows the most helpful and useful help sources rated by the participants and following by the formal sources and lastly self-reliant. Now is the person correlation coefficient. As you can see here, the higher the WMWS score, the more the participants willing to seek help from others. Therefore, it makes my objective achieved to correlate between these variables. Now is discussion. As mentioned from the previous study, the higher the levels of mental waving may indicate that they were having a good condition to think and act. So the highest the score of WMWS shows a good condition of the mental state of well-being. By conducting this study, the informal sources shows the most popular sources used by the participants rather than the formal help sources due to barriers like confidentiality issues and negative perceptions. However, GHSQ and WMWDS shows the positively correlated with one another and it really supports my objective. One of the previous studies have stated that the seeking help was the perfect dependent variable for well-being. For the last part is conclusion and recommendation. Overall, I can conclude that there is a statistically significant relationship between the health-seeking behavior and mental well-being among the first-year undergraduate students in UIS and Jenke, and all of the objectives of this study were achieved. And besides, from the beginning until now, the informal sources of help was the most preferred by students to seek help. However, there is some of limitation on this study. First is from the technical requirement, which there is a failure to provide an accurate response rate according to the requirement to answer all of the questions. So I overcome this by analyzing the data by looking at the Likert skill type rather than which sources are mostly used by participants. Second is about the gender. The male students were underrepresented in comparison to female students. It may give different data if there is an equality or stability of the gender numbers. Last but not least is recommendations. I would like to recommend that this research will be conducted for the average population as it seems to this population level data is much more telling me on this research. Second is promote this issue as a current opinion for formal and informal help sources to provide more qualified and quality service for those suffering from mental health issues. So this is the list of references that I have used during my research. So that's all from me and thank you for watching.